Right. Well, in mice, there are, are almost always sex differences. Um, so T6 benefits males a little bit more. NMN in, in my lab, we found benefits females a little bit more for longevity and, uh, and prevention of frailty or delaying of frailty. Uh, so it depends on the molecule, but generally our approaches work in both sexes. Uh, and, you know, I don't know, and I think nobody knows whether if there's a sex difference and gender difference in mice, there's also a difference in humans. So I don't think we can just extrapolate. We need to test it. Uh, and in, in the case of an NAD booster, which is a relative of NMN that I'm helping put through clinical trials in humans, that molecule has been in both males and females. Um, and they respond very similarly in terms of raising NAD. And I can talk about this now because there was a conference at NIH where it was, uh, the results were revealed. So what we see is in both males and females, if you take one gram of NMN orally every day, which I would say you should take it in the morning if you're going to take it, because that's when your NAD levels should go up, uh, that you roughly double your NAD levels in the blood. That's both male and females. And if you take two grams, you'll triple it. Uh, and people my age typically have half the levels of NAD um, for their sirtuin activity. And so that that's why I take a gram a day to try and maintain youthful levels of NAD. Uh, but there is there are some anecdotal, anecdotal differences uh, with NR and NMN with males and females reacting to it. Um, and again, it's, it's an anecdote. So, uh, you know, take it as a story at this point. But I've seen enough uh, and heard enough to think that there's probably something to it. Uh, in the case of females, uh, I've known oh, a large number, you know, more than could be coincidental, who have felt changes to their their body. Um, so I'm not saying this is de definitely scientific, but things to look out for. If you're a woman, you start taking NMN, you might notice that your menstrual cycle is more youthful, to put it bluntly, um, and maybe even moods can change, which might be hormonal, I'm guessing. Um, and one of the reasons for thinking that this might be true is in mice, we've published with uh, Lindsay Wu, one of my uh, former postdocs in Sydney, that we can reverse female infertility in old age. And as far as I know, we're the only group that can do that. We give those mice NMN for just a month and they start producing babies at the age of the equivalent of a 70 year old human and the ovaries come back to life. So it, it's possible that that's what's going on if women are taking high dose of NMN. So I, I'm not a doctor, but I would think that if I was a female, I'd, I'd I'd start on a low dose, 250 milligrams perhaps, and just see how your body reacts and do that you know, with uh, your doctor's um, knowledge, of course, because if you're gonna mess with hormones, your doctor should know about that. In the case of men, there's a lot less known about that, but it's feasible that our hormones are also affected. And there's a really good paper that shows that one of the sirtuins, um, these are the genes we work on that control uh, we think aging and longevity as well as defenses. But one of the things that was found for SOT2 is that it controls hormone production in male and female mice and in human cells. And so it's also feasible that men have a reaction like that. So I would say for men as well, um, monitor your hormone levels, which are, it's easy to do. You could, doctor could do it. There are some commercial places that measure estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, um, just to make sure that you're not going out of the normal range.